The country of Finland is celebrating the centennial of its independence this month. So it's not surprising that Finnish people in the U.S. are celebrating right along with them. And in fact, that celebration has been going on all year long. Tonight, we're going to look back at 2017 and the many ways that residents of Finnish descent help their Finnish counterparts hail the independence of Finland. The most important summer holiday in Finland and among Finnish Americans. You'll see the events that were held in Upper Michigan. Excerpts from a speech given to the Minnesota Chamber of Commerce from the President of Finland on the subject of Finnish independence. And highlights of a trip to Finland itself by the Marquette Choral Society and the Marquette City Band. We'll join in Kajaani, which is the sister city, one of the sister cities of Marquette. And we will uh, do a joint concert there, as well as having a, a reception and getting to meet people in Kajaani. Coming up, you'll see the celebration around the UP, which actually began in 2016. This is Independence Day number 99, an important one because, because we're looking forward. That's what we're doing today. We're celebrating uh, Finnish Independence Day and looking forward to the wonderful and many celebrations that will happen next year as part of the centennial year. It's the Finnish centennial, a celebration, next. And we're celebrating, in, in particular this year, the centennial of uh, the Republic of Finland. December 13th, 1917. The people of Finland announced to the world that they are officially independent, stepping out of the shadow of Russia. The Finns had achieved official independence one week earlier, December 6th, and the first election was held the following month. Two years later, celebrating the date of December 6th becomes a regular event in the UP. Over the years, the celebration got bigger and bigger. This year, the centennial year, was the biggest year of all, and TV6 News was there. Here are some of the highlights. Finally tonight, a traveling sauna stopped at the Honka Homestead today for the start of Johannes' festival. The sauna has traveled more than 9,000 miles from Twin Cities, Minnesota, with stops in Texas, the West Coast, uh, yeah, most, and the Upper Midwest. Well, the sauna is traveling to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Finnish independence. We knew that uh, there are Finns all across the United States, and we knew that they are celebrating the centennial not only on December 6th, but throughout the year, like today here in, uh, at Hanka Homestead. So we wanted to highlight that American Finns are celebrating the centennial together all year long. <laughs> the Santa will move on to the East Coast and travel from Boston to Florida before being auctioned off in December. Proceeds from that go towards travel expenses. A link to more information on the Santa can be found on our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. Today marked the second day of the Finnish holiday, Johannes, with many people celebrating this morning in Hancock. Hundreds gathered on Finlandia's campus for the flag raising and to listen to the ambassador, Christy Kalpi, express her love for the Finnish population in the UP. A husband and wife team were also gathering hundreds of signatures for a giant greeting card they plan to send to Finland in October with the honorary council, Jim Curdy. We're all Finns to some extent, or friends of Finland, and it's their big year. It's a big centennial year for them, and we thought this would be a, a good and rather unique way to tell them we're glad that they have lasted 100 years and may they last 100 more. The two plan to collect signatures at other Finnish festivals in the U.S. to make one big accordion card. Hundreds celebrated their Finnish heritage today at the 8th annual Finn Fun Day in Nagani. The League of Finnish American Societies hosted the event at the Nagani Township Hall, where visitors could enjoy Finnish food and music. Six vendors staffed the Tori or market with Finnish-themed goods. In the afternoon, the Finnish National Dress Review showcased different examples of traditional Finnish clothing. It's history. It's our history. And it's just as if you were a little maple leaf and you didn't know you came from a tree. You're dumb. <laughs> you should know everything, learn everything you can learn. All attendees could also sign the Centennial Greeting Card for Finland, designed by John Kiltonen, which will be taken to Finland for fall in time for its Centennial Independence Celebration on December 6th. Finlandia University joins in celebrating Finland's 100th year of independence this year. The University and Finnish American Heritage Center will offer several enrichment courses on Finnish culture. 
this fall. And the classes are Finnish language, spinning, and Finland in the 21st century. Because it's Finland's centennial year, it's uh, all the more reason for us to uh, keep up our mission here at the Finnish American Heritage Center, which part of it is to preserve and promote Finnish culture here in North America. And uh, what better way to do that than to uh, bring people here to the center and have them learn from people who have a wonderful skill set. Classes are open to community members. They start October 3rd and 4th at 5.30 in the evening. Anyone interested in registering for the class can stop by the Finnish American Heritage Center in Hancock. Northern Michigan University's music department hosted a male Finnish choir consisting of 50 men of all ages. The Swedish-speaking choir from Porvu, Finland is currently making their first tour to America. This concert is part of the group's seven concert U.S. tour. They'll be singing music by Jan Spelius, who's uh, uh, one of the most prominent uh, Finnish composer known to most people. Many other pieces uh, of a wide variety, modern, classical, in multiple languages. But the most exciting thing is this fabulous sound of uh, the unaccompanied male chorus. Finland is also celebrating its centennial all year long. The anniversary of their independence is December 6th. Finnish Americans are connecting with their heritage tonight. TV6's Houghton Hancock Bureau reporter Mariah Powell has more from Finnish Independence Day celebrations in Hancock. <laughs> Finns across the world celebrate Finland's 100th Independence Day today. People at Finlandia University joined in the spirit of Sumi 100's theme of togetherness. Together is the vision that these architects had for how it is we were going to celebrate. They envisioned Finns and friends of Finns around the world coming together in honor of this very special occasion. The Finnish American Heritage Center hosted a live Independence Day reception viewing. The reception is held every year at the Presidential Palace in Helsinki. It's really an integral part of the Finnish um, Independence Day. I think a lot of people here might not know what actually happens at the Presidential Palace rece reception, so it'll be interesting to let them see what it's like in real time. They also experienced other Finnish independence traditions like reception cliché bingo. I guess we're trying to go for the sort of an event that people in Finland, what they do. So they invite people over to their houses, have some food, some drinks and some coffee and just watch the reception at the presidential palace. The reception broadcast began at noon Eastern time with more than 2,500 people shaking the Finnish president's hand. I'm Mariah Powell, TV6 News, Hancock. Coming up, you'll hear from Finland's president as he talks about Finnish independence very accomplished, a public servant that has done great and wonderful things for his country. Would you all please welcome His Excellency Sali Ninesto. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to have a possibility of meeting you today. And in particular, I want to thank you all for honoring the centennial of Finland's independence in the form of this event. For every nation, independence and freedom are the foundation upon which everything else is built. We Finns are no exception. Although we rarely boast of our achievements, it is fair to conclude that the first 100 years of our independence have been a success. In four generations, we have managed to transform a poor and agrarian country into a modern and vibrant democracy, and it, <coughs> into a country that has assumed leading positions in many international rankings. One ranking is especially important for me. For years, Finland has been rated as the world's most stable country. In the current state of world affairs, this is a great value. <clears throat> the 
Looking back in history, it's often easy to see a direct line between events and the final outcome. But history has uh, very few inevitabilities. Before our independence, Finland had been a part of Sweden for more than 600 years, and after that, part of Russian Empire for 100 years. We gained our independence from Russia during the final stage of the First World War, at the time of the Russian Revolution. And when the Soviet Union attacked Finland uh, 20 years later, the United Finns rose to defend their freedom. The miracle of the Winter War transpired. There are three stories about uh, these early times which I gladly share with you. The first is that after the First World War, Finland was the only country to pay its debts to United States. We honor our commitments. The second is how, during the Second World War, Finland was the only European country that fought the Soviet Union that was not occupied. We cherish our independence. Thirdly, ever since the uh, Second World War, our foreign and security policy has been aimed at ensuring that there will never be no Third World War. We are not uh, here only to celebrate Finland's independence and good relations between Finland and the United States. We are striving to attain the same values and virtues for the better world. I thank you for this opportunity to speak here today. I am very pleased that we can now continue our discussions. I wish you and your companies and communities continued success. Thank you. And both the band and the choir have been working really hard uh, preparing music by Finnish composers, but of course we want to take our American music over there also uh, and perform that in Finland. Marquette Choral Society was invited by the band to join them. They, they came up with the original idea to go. The band did, and then the band invited us to come along, saying we could do a joint concert and it would be great, and it's the centennial of Finland's independence, so we thought, sounds like a good deal. I think that's pretty cool, to be um, over there and part of that, especially through like the Sister City um, organization, you know, and the contacts that both Kayani and Marquette have. Um, I think that's going to be really great. Enjoying Finland and looking over at the beautiful city of Kopio is just great. Okay, you need to pay careful attention now because this gets complicated. The Marquette City Band and the Marquette Choral Society both went to Finland last summer. But as they made plans to tour, they decided not to tour together. Why? And then as we explored options, we realized that the Choral Society would be singing mostly, in fact it turns out, all in cathedrals, churches, or concert halls, whereas the band often performs outside. So we realized early on that both groups couldn't tour together all the time, and it evolved into the uh, arrangement that we have now where there will really be two separate tours with one meeting in Kayani, our sister city, and that's where we'll do our joint uh, concert. So both groups put together separate tours, with the Choral Society leaving for Finland first. It was pretty much as I expected. I talked to several people who had been there, and the general consensus was if you're ever looking for a place that looks just like the UP and isn't the UP, it's Finland. It's pretty much about the same, maybe like a little bit colder, at least during this time of year, but it's pretty, you know, used to it by now. Our first stop on our tour was in Turku, which is the oldest city in Finland. The first cathedral we sang in was in Turku. 
It had unbelievable acoustics. It was something I've never experienced before. The sound basically was bouncing off the walls and coming right back to you. It had like a two second of echo effect. That's why it was something I've never experienced before. It was very difficult to sing like that, but it sounded amazing once you were out in the audience. The city band left on their trip a few days later. We left Marquette and then we went to, um, uh, outside of Chicago, we went to one of Steve Brugren's students who just graduated from NMU to his high school and then we had a rehearsal. So the day we left, we had rehearsal from like 2 to 5.30 or whatever. And then we got back on the bus and went to O'Hare. So then we flew over there and then met up with the woman that um, arranged our transport to the hotel. And then we checked into the hotel and got to relax. And then, uh, you know, then the tour started that Monday, really. Our very first concert was the Rock Church, yes. The band, the band had their concert that Monday night in the Rock Church. And that was really fun because that's where we get to meet um, Helena. Helena Sinisalo. Okay, and what do you do? I'm a conductor. A conductor where? Well, um, I conduct in Helsinki uh, and I work for East Helsinki Music Institute and I conduct two bands there. And she was phenomenal. She directed one of our pieces. Um, so that was really fun. We went from there to Tampara our guide from the travel agency that booked our, our tour um, came on the bus after our second concert and she said that she had never experienced this before, that there were more people in the audience that knew people from our group than she knew because there were so many people that had emailed or written or called um, friends and family in Finland and said we were going to be there and so people would come even some people came in from their cottages to come to the concert and see us. And Oulo was the first concert where we had a big crowd. You know, we had a couple hundred people there at that one. And, and that really made a difference. You know, yeah. the first two crowds were very small. And so then we finally felt like, hey, you know, we're really part of this thing. Yeah. And Kayani, that's where we had the joint concert with the Marquette Choral Society. And it was further along in their tour because they were there a little bit before us. And um, I have to say that I tell people about our reception there. I, I, it was the royal red carpet. And that royal car red carpet had fringe on it. They just so, so totally welcomed us. That was really fun. We were welcomed um, as soon as we walk into the hotel by a traditional band they had there. Uh, Kayani was extremely fun because of the band. It was so nice to see people that we knew from Marquette. And all of a sudden, this um, traditional Finnish band, I recognized that their main singer, Juha, is singing Home on the Range in Finnish. And then later, while he's singing, he starts singing in English. And in the background, you can hear everybody starting to join in, especially the beautiful voices from the Choral Society. Yeah, that was a pretty fun little moment there. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. It was really fun to see the group that we had kind of split up and then met back in Kayani. And the auditorium was beautiful. We had a good audience. and. That was a really fun event. They hosted us very nicely. And the Rock Church in Helsinki, that place is known for their acoustics. They have a copper wired ceiling. And so it's a small space, so you wouldn't think it'd have beautiful acoustics, but it does. And that was a once-in-a-lifetime experience to sing in such a legendary place. Oh gosh, then we went to um, the Brass Festival, Lieksa. So we got permission to perform on the, on the concerts at this Brass Festival. So that was really, really great. Then we went to uh, Kiopio, which is a pretty big city. It's about 125,000, and we played an outdoor concert there. Then the next day we took a day trip to Turku, which is the oldest city in all of Finland and was originally the capital before they moved to Helsinki. Right. 
and we played there. We were told um, to always approach the people in the audience after the concerts. The Finns are pretty reserved and keep to themselves. They don't like to be a bother. So our lane, our tour courier said, they want to talk to you guys, but they're just too afraid to approach you. So go out and talk to the people in the audience. Ask them how the concert was. Ask them how they enjoyed it. Maybe ask them for recommendations for things to do in the city, places to go eat. And we had great conversations with the people in the audience. Some people loved it. It was so crazy to see people's different connections. You're from Marquette, Michigan? My mom lives there. I was just there in 2005. Or, oh, I went up there for FinFest. Five different cities, five stops. Um, and it was very nice. It was planned really well. We had about a day, a day of travel and a day of touring and then a day of concert. So in each place we were two nights. We're all Finns to some extent, or friends of Finland, and it's their big year. It's a big centennial year for them. We're glad that they have lasted 100 years, and may they last 100 more. How appreciative they were that we came. You know, Steve always said we're here to help um, celebrate with you, you know, your 100 year end, our anniversary independence, and, um, you know, to, to play Finlandia for people in Finland. You know, it's, it's pretty special. I think the people of Finland truly appreciated that a group from the United States was coming to actually celebrate with them. Together is the theme for Finland's centennial. Working together, the Finns have overcome many hardships gained many hard-fought victories. But we have never been alone in our efforts. The United States has been and will continue to be a very important partner for Finland and vice versa.